Hey, and welcome to the CPAP BiPAP video where I'll briefly cover the differences between the two. As always, this is Russ from Rockwell County EMS where we've been pronouncing GIF the right way since 96. A lot of people don't know that's actually an Icelandic term meaning low quality picture show of short duration. No need to Google that. You can trust me because I save lives for a living. Speaking of saving lives, CPAP and BiPAP are both methods by which to administer positive pressure assistance to an individual experiencing shortness of breath. Now, that's done by affixing a mask, tightening it down against the patient's face to seal it up, and administering positive pressure that aids in both ventilation, the movement of air in and out, as well as alveolar respiration, the gas exchange that happens in the alveoli. Now, CPAP is continuous positive airway pressure. That's a continuous dosage of positive pressure that we administer throughout the duration of this intervention. Uh, now, no matter what the patient's doing, inhaling, exhaling, dead and not breathing, it's still continuing on no matter what until we actually stop it. Alternatively, BiPAP or bi-level positive airway pressure is the administration of two different values of positive pressure that correlate to the patient's ventilations. Now, a high value we administer as the patient inhales and we drop that down to a low value as the patient exhales and that alternates back and forth as the patient uh, goes through the ventilatory cycle. Now, that term, as you see it listed here, BIPAP, is trademarked. BiPAP is trademarked by Philips Respironics. How this may show up in your professional life is if you work for a facility or agency that uses a device other than Philips, then you may see this listed as some other means. Uh, what's common is BLPAP, at least that's close, bi-level positive airway pressure, or even sometimes they break BiPAP down into its individual components on the machine into CPAP, the low value that's constant, and then the intermittent administration of pressure support on top of CPAP when they inhale. Or even yet still, another way, IPAP and EPAP values, inspiratory and expiratory positive airway pressure values that again correlate to the inhalation and exhalation cycle. Confused yet? That's okay, so am I. We'll carry on and hopefully clear some of this stuff up. So before we get on, just as a means of orienting ourselves to the rest of the high-quality picture show, I'm going to give you a graph. The graph on the y-axis is pressure that's displayed in uh, centimeters of water, which is the unit of measure for uh, these airway devices, and then the x-axis is time. So with no CPAP or BiPAP, this is just our baseline, inhalations and exhalations will be illustrated as upward and downward arrows. This is no CPAP, nor any BiPAP. Now, before we get into this, it's important also to cover PEEP. PEEP is positive end expiratory pressure. This is the positive pressure value at the end of expiration that we can measure, a measurable positive pressure even at the end of expiration. Generally, in the emergency setting, this is a device that we're using to set a low PEEP valve, or a low PEEP value, uh, just as I said before, uh, via a valve mechanism. So, on inhalation, we're not really doing anything, uh, we're not assisting this, uh, it's just on exhalation that we set a value, generally 5, and we say, as this patient exhales, they cannot get below a minimum value that we've set here, 5. So as the patient inhales and exhales, or we assist them with a back valve mask, if we have a PEEP valve in place that sets a low limit for the airway pressure, it can't get below what we've listed, or what we've prescribed, what we've set and here, five. Uh, now, this is very similar to CPAP, uh, but different. Same, same, but different. Now, here's how. CPAP, we're administering, again, if you remember, a constant positive airway pressure. So here, instead of limiting the low value of five with a valve, we're just ensuring that we're continually administering uh, positive pressure at a value of five centimeters of water uh, into the airway which provides for a little bit of assistance on the inhalation, really not much. Uh, they may not even notice it, it's such a low pressure. Uh, and then on exhalation, it just ensures that the patient's airway cannot achieve a lower value, a lower pressure than the constant positive pressure that we're administering. So as they inhale and exhale, we're, we're maintaining a minimum value pressure by constantly pumping this air in there. Now, this may not even be enough for the patient to feel uh, like they're being assisted, except that it's doing some work behind the scenes. It's kind of helping to keep the alveoli open and aiding in some gas exchange uh, even as the patient exhales. Now, let's say this person is having a terrible time breathing. We might be inclined to bump up that pressure to help them a little bit more. 
we might bump it up to 15 in the hopes that uh, giving them a new foundation, uh, a pressure assistance of 15 underneath their inhalation might help them breathe. The problem is, is that when they exhale, uh, what's normally a passive process, exhalation, now becomes some active fight as they have to push out, breathe out against the wall of air. Now, if this person's experiencing some dyspnea or breathing difficulty, uh, they may not even notice the assistance they may be uh, receiving from the inhalation uh, pressure uh, because they're having to fight against this wall of air as they exhale. Enter in bi-level positive airway pressure or BiPAP. Now, we administer our continual dose uh, of CPAP just as before, uh, except on inhalation we can administer an additional pressure support. Uh, that's just the additional pressure above CPAP on inhalation. Uh, and then as the patient exhales we drop that pressure back down so they don't have to push against that wall of air. Alternatively we can list this as, just like I said before, uh, IPAP, which would be the total value from 0 all the way up to 15, and then EPAP, which is the exact same thing as CPAP. It's just that here we're calling it our inspiratory pressure value, which is 15, and our expiratory pressure value, which is the same as our CPAP, 5. Now, as this patient breathes, the same thing happens no matter what you call it. The inhalation, uh, we administer an assistance bump of pressure, uh, and then as the patient exhales, uh, we drop that pressure back down to make it easier. So we're achieving the best of both worlds. We're giving them assistance as they inhale, and yet we're still administering at least a little bit of pressure as they exhale to keep that alveoli open, to aid in gas exchange at the alveoli, and so forth. That's about all we can cover in a six or seven minute video. Of course, there's tons more we could add to this, but short video here. If you have any more questions, feel free to email me at G-O-O-G-L-E and type in your questions, and I'll get back to you right away. Uh, until next time, uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Wayne Enterprises, providing medical devices, airway devices for everyone. No one cared who I was until I put on the CPAP. Not the CPAP he deserves, but the CPAP he needs. <laughs>